Okay, so um, we'll run through what's going to happen in this video. Um, and that way you'll know what's going on. Um, this is relation in relation to the last video. If you haven't watched that one, go back and watch it. And then you'll know what's going on here. So, to start off with, uh, we have a 36 volt panel, 185 watts, um, 20 years old. And this is the one we're doing the test on. So here, this is our load. This is just a 12 volt AGM battery that I've been running down. Now I don't have a regulator between the battery and the panel. So after some time, the panel will charge the battery up too high, but um, not enough or quick enough before we get this video done. All right, so let's go through what's hooked up where. All right, so you'll see two multimeters there. They're both reading current. And as we've seen in the last video, and we'll use this diagram to show you, um, multimeter, sorry about the sunlight, because uh, we are facing into the sun at the moment. Multimeter one is this one here, hooked between the bypass diode and the second string of cells. That'll tell us how much current is flowing through the bypass diode when we shade these cells. Multimeter 2 is between the first and second string of cells. So we can see how much current is flowing through those two strings and how much current is flowing through our diode, bypass diode, when we shade the panel. So how do we do this one here? Uh, quite simple delicate job but simple you will see over in that corner there I'll zoom you in where I have ground away the polymer on the back of the panel picked up the buzz bar between the first and second string lifted it out cut it and I've soldered a negative and a positive wire on there just some twin core so and multimeter 2 or amp meter 2 is connected to that um, twin core wire, which once again is our amp meter between our first and second string. In this case, the bottom two strings on the panel because the panel's laying on its side. So um, that little light over there, LED, is just drawing some power off our battery so it doesn't charge up too fast. So all I've got to do now um, is take the lead from the solar panel, plug it into the lead on the battery and we're underway. And as we can see up there, once again sorry about the uh, sunshine, I've disconnected the bypass diode, the positive lead of our multimeter is hooked up to that diode which you can't really see, but it is there as you should be able to see now. So we're coming out of our bypass diode, going through multimeter one, and then back in to the um, second row. I'll zoom your bag out. Going back into the second row right here, where that diode would normally connect. So we can watch the current. So. Our little um, GoPro down there is going to be filming our multimeters. This camera here will be around the front of the panel and we can watch in real time when I put a slight amount of shade, being this screwdriver, over one of those cells, in this case here, we're going to shite slightly shade this bottom corner cell here all right well it actually ends up being one of these two in reality but only one and what we're going to see is how much current that bypass diode can detect before it starts to bypass and you're going to get a big surprise if you watch the last video you will know my claims and that claim is one milliamp 
that bypass diode can detect a one milliamp drop in current through those two strings of cells, believe it or not. All right, so I'll get this camera set up out in the front and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we're ready to go. We're looking at the front of the panel facing the sun. I had to move the camera a fair way back because um, it was putting a shadow on the panel, as you can see. Um, and we're going to shade just this one here, this little cell here, with the screwdriver. So I'm going to go and turn the other camera on so we can watch the voltage and the current. Turning it on now. watching our two meters and now I'm going to get a screwdriver and put a bit of shade across this bottom one here and we can watch the meters. And the first thing we should do is actually plug the panel in. That would help greatly. Okay, so 4.49 amps at battery voltage is our power output at the moment, 4.5 amps. So that is the current flowing through the panel into the battery. So now we're going to shade a bit of this cell here and watch the bypass diode so start to conduct, which is not in the one. On the left. There we go. Put some serious shade over it. And see what happens. Now we only have to cover one of these cells, and of course I'm not going to get the whole lot with my hand. But you can see now bulk of the current is flowing through the bypass diode, and only 800 milliamps is going through the first and second row of um, cells. Now the odd thing is if you add those two amounts up, guess what you get? You still get four and a half amps flowing through the panel. Now we're going to get a nice big bit of cardboard here and we will block off this much okay so we could say our first row or in second first and second row of cells which is 12 volts 12 volts 24 volts 36 volts basically got 12 volt three 12 volt panels in series which equates to string panels in series we've totally killed the bottom row the top two are still outputting maximum power. The meters have gone off. I'm turning them back on once again. Four, four and a half amps. We kill this bottom two rows. 4.47 amps flowing through the bypass diode now. Another 17 milliamps passing through the cell still just due to the ambient light that can pass through the cardboard you don't need a lot for it to conduct but um, in total even with these two cells or two rows of cells our 12 volt panel on the bottom killed all together just about only 17 milliamps we still have four and a half amps flowing through our other two 12 volt panels which proves that and these are all in series so that proves that killing one panel in a series string does not affect the current flowing through the other panels due to the bypass diode. 
So there you go. And like I said, those bypass diodes are that sensitive. They will detect a one milliamp drop flowing through the cell and start to bypass. That is to ensure that even if this is partly shaded, this panel here, um, it can still output its maximum power. So um, no point in putting an optimizer on a solar panel because it already has built-in optimizers that an external optimizer cannot compete with. You will not get a one milliamp resolution out of an external optimizer. So that's how it all works. We got to see the current flowing through the bypass diode and at the same time we watched the current flowing through these two strings of cells and even when we totally kill this 12 volt pair of strings this 12 volt panel and this 12 volt panel still outputted maximum current the numbers don't lie alright guys um, that is the first one of our video tests and um, next we're going to series connect three of these panels we'll hook it up to a MPPT charge controller and a battery and load and then we'll do some more shading tests and see if we reduce the output of one panel whether the other two are also reduced by that same amount we're going to completely block this panel off completely cover it so no sun can get it and we'll see what happens with the other two panels if these um, promoters of shading problems with series connected panels are correct and we totally drop this panel out the other two should drop out as well we shade this 50 percent the other two should drop down by 50 percent but you'll see that doesn't happen thanks for watching we'll see you next video